Hey guys, I hope you managed to install AutoKeras after watching my previous tutorial where we went through the installation process and quickly checked if it's working or not. In this tutorial, let's see how to use it on structured data classification. And what do we mean by structured data? Think of this as data in an Excel sheet or CSV file where you have different columns. And in this example, we're going to look at classification and exactly the same structure can be used for regression. Again, regression is where you're predicting uh, an actual value, a continuous value. Classification is where you're predicting a class. In this case, let's use the Wisconsin breast cancer data set and let's try to predict whether it is going to be, uh, the tumor is going to be malignant, malignant or benign, okay? And it's based on these various features and I believe there are 30 of these columns here, okay? And uh, first of all, let's actually see what we have done in one of our previous uh, videos like whether you watch 154 or 155 please subscribe to my channel so you are up to date with all of this stuff uh, that we're talking about but otherwise just go back watch these videos if you want more information about this breast cancer classification but again i'll cover some of the topics uh, here quickly okay so these are all the columns that we have in the data set and uh, meaning these are all different attributes or features, if you want to call them. And we're going to use them as our X, uh, you know, variable and then predict whether it is malignant or benign, right? Which is our Y. So we are fitting X to predict our Y, okay? And this entire part is data handling, right? So we are going to import all the required libraries. And in fact, for our actual AutoKeras, we don't need to import any of these because we're not going to put together things ourselves, right? We are not going to do dense and activation and all that kind of stuff. So this is the code from last time, not AutoKeras yet, but so let me not run it and quickly go through it, okay? And then we captured the information of breast cancer data set in data frame, we'll see that. But once we get this into X and Y or X train and Y train, right? This is basically what we do for machine learning anyway, whether you're doing deep learning or any other types of uh, data fitting, we divide it into train test so we can fit it to the train and test it to the testing data set. So no tricks up to here. And after this, in the last video, yeah, well, not the previous one, but in videos 154, 155, or any other video that we uh, talked about so far, uh, we kind of now put together a model. And uh, sometimes we say, okay, uh, our what is our loss? What is our optimizers? And what is our activations at every, you know, one of these layers? Do you want to drop out? Do you want to do any of this stuff? So this is, again, still a fun exercise because it's very educational most of the time. And here we experimented with a few models and then uh, we decided, okay, let's uh, use this model. And what do you do once you define a model? You fit it, right? Model.fit and your X train, Y train and all that kind of stuff, okay? And validation data. And then once you fit it, you want to evaluate the model. So you just do model.evaluate and print out the accuracy and then look at the validation curves or uh, you know the, the confusion matrix and so on. This is what, what we have done the last time. Why am I covering that? So you can appreciate the ease of AutoML, okay? So now let's get to exactly the same problem, except let's use AutoML this time. So let's go through this line by line. So let me cre clear all the variables again, just to make sure and zoom in the right hand side so you can keep an eye on it. Okay, so let's import the regular libraries. These are the standard libraries. And you see it's saying like, okay, hey, you are importing this, but you're not even using it. Okay, so these libraries. So we don't even need to import them. So let's go ahead and make the code simpler. Make the code very simple. So we are not using any of these. So let's go ahead and do this. And by the way, uh, I'm working on uh, Python 3.7, Keras, I think 2.3. Please watch my last tutorial in terms of uh, what to do to install auto uh, uh, Keras. Okay, so let's go ahead and import the plotting library and pandas to handle our data. And then of course, import auto Keras as AK. There you go. So we imported AutoKeras. Now let's go ahead and import the CSV file for Wisconsin breast cancer data set. I'll leave this link. If you Google search, you'll find it, but I'll leave this link anyhow. Again, you have access to the code anyway. Okay, so let's capture this information as part of our data frame and let's uh, get a good understanding of what uh, is going on in this data frame, right? So here, uh, there are no null data sets, uh, I mean, null columns. If there are any null, 
uh, rows or columns or cells, if you want to call it, then it shows up here and you can drop it, you can fill it and all that stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to call, uh, relabel this one column called diagnosis as label because diagnosis is first, tough to say. <laughs> and uh, label makes more sense anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And I'm also printing data types just to get a quick idea of what's going on. They're all floating point, they're all numbers, except for the label. The label is M or B, right? So either a malignant or benign. And in fact, if you want to look at uh, the plot, you can just go ahead and do the plot to get a good feel for what's going on. There are like more benign uh, data uh, points than malignant. So you can upscale M or you can downscale B. Again, watch my video about how to balance data sets but let's not worry about it for now, okay? So uh, that just gives us an idea of how the data looks like. Now, let's go ahead and, well, while we are understanding the data, why not? We have 357 benigns and 212 malignants right there. Okay, so uh, now we have to define our X and Y before going into uh, defining a model. So Y is easy. Y is basically my data frame uh, with the labels, right? So all the labels. And uh, now, if you look at this, my Y is an ND array, and uh, uh, it's tough to see it here, but my Y uh, is basically M and B, okay? Now, I want those to be zero and one, so it's easy to work with when we are modeling them. So that's what label encoder actually does. We are encoding M equals to one and benign equals to zero, so that's what these lines are. So let's go ahead and run those lines here. And uh, finally, my X is every column, all of my 31 or so columns, except for the columns label and ID, because ID doesn't say anything about the data set. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a feature, and label obviously is our Y. So let's define our X and Y. Now, let's actually scale X values, because again, our values, if you just print, let's go ahead and do this, okay? Uh, we, we should have done just head, but that's okay. If you look at these values, you see uh, one column has a value of 18, 20, and so on, and the other one is 10, 17, and the other one is 0 0.46, 0 0.27, 0 0.11. So it's very important to normalize all of this data. Please make this a uh, habit, normalizing it. And I am using MinMax Scalar. You can just, uh, uh, I mean, MinMax Scalar is basically, it scales each range of these values between the minimum and maximum of its respective uh, columns or uh, you know fields. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Again, all of this I covered in, a, in the last tutorial, but again, in case you are watching this for the first time, I want to make sure you understand what's going on. So hence the reason I'm explaining this. Uh, now we are splitting the data. Now we have X and Y. Now we need to split data into X train, Y train. Again, this is something we have done in 50 plus videos, so no need to explain. This is one incentive for you to subscribe to my channel and go ahead and look at my previous videos. So far, so good. What did we do until now? We just got to the stage where we did X train and Y train. What do we typically do next? We do define our model. So what do we do here? Instead of defining a model, I'm just saying you can call this model, but I called it classifier or CLF for short. My CLF is AK, which is what? Or Autokeras library. Within that library, I'm getting structured data classifier. By the way, I should have mentioned this. Uh, within Autokeras, you can actually do image classifier, image regressor, text classifier, text regressor, and this is the one we are using, structured data classifier, which is if you have data like this, like the ones we have, and we are trying to do a classification problem. If you want to do a regression problem, then obviously you got to use structured data regressor where you're predicting, for example, the price of stock at a given moment of time, whether it is day or an hour of that day, whatever it is. Structured data regressor predicts a value. Classifier, we are using it for classification. Okay, so let's get back. And uh, so the entire, if I remove these lines, the entire model is right there. Structured data classifier, and then uh, in the parameters, I'm going to just say max trials equals to five. There are a few other things that you can define here. Look at the documentation for Autokeras. Max trials is one thing that's a bit useful. So max, uh, if you don't define it, by default, the value is 100. That means how many models to try, uh, uh, maximum number of models to try. If you define 100, for this example, it may be fast, but 
usually it's very slow. So let's just do five models for now and see if it gives us the best model of these five. And let's put number of epochs as 25, just so we don't stare at the screen for a long time. So step here, it defines the models, how many models, okay? Let me just do that. It defines how many models. And down here, we are fitting it, just like model.fit. Remember, all we do is, sorry, all we do is model.fit. That's exactly what we are doing. Once it finds what that classifier is, we are fitting it to X train, Y train. You can do uh, validation data and all that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this first line first. And uh, the next line where it is fitting, this can be very slow depending on your system because it's going through five different models. So it started with the first model, goes through 25, and now it should go to the next model it already gave me, the reason is, it's actually giving me 100% accuracy right there. So it's like, I, I can't get any more, any better. So it stopped right there. Let's do 10 epochs and see. Let's randomly run this line again and run the next line again. Apparently the first model it picked worked out very well. So it's not even going to the next one, okay? So this one, hopefully it should, okay. It looks like this is doing a great job even with the first model, okay? So let's just do max trials equals to 10, reinitiate this one more time and see what it does. It's unfortunate that I cannot show things because our model is doing so great. If it doesn't con converge this time, then we'll do something else. By the way, while it's doing that, I should show you this. You see how it started off with, okay, this is the trial number one, uh, and here is the model. Okay, structured data something, and then uh, this is these are all the hyperparameters uh, that it's actually including, and the optimizer it's using is Adam right there, and then uh, learning rate is 0 0.001, and this is the, uh, something that it changes. Oh, now it's doing trial number two. Okay, good. So we can actually see what's going on. Learning rate is the same, optimizer is Adam, and you can see the best value versus the value in the current. Uh, uh, iteration right here. So let's go down and then value number three, it seems to be done right there. Again, 0.993 accuracy. And let's go and see what it actually uh, picked. Adam, 16, the previous, the best value so far, 32. So 16 is not the best one, 512 for this. So what does that actually mean? Yeah, you can keep an eye on all of that, but okay, once it's done, what do we do? Well, now we have a classifier, right? Now we have something that we think works and uh, let's check our accuracy. This is exactly the same that we have done uh, previously. So we're getting an accuracy of 97.9 on the test data. Remember, this is not even the training data. The training data, we are getting uh, almost 100% accuracy, and on test data, we are doing 97.9. This is great. Maybe I cannot put together something that gets this type of accuracy. Okay, so let's go ahead and predict our confusion matrix. Again, I'm not gonna explain these lines. It's pretty self-evident. I'm doing predictions and I'm just uh, uh, mapping my predictions against the tests. So my plots are in a new window and I got 87 here, 53, and only two, only three of these false uh, positives, like wrong classifications, everything else excellent classification. So I'm very happy with this model. Now, if you're curious, how does the model look like? So the way you can do export your model is CLF. Remember, that's our temporary variable to actually go through and then find out all the uh, you know best model. Now let's go ahead and export the model. So I'm dumping the model into a parameter called model, which is now we are in comfort zone, right? And let's go ahead and print the model summary. Now we can actually see what the summary is. And so layer one, you see how we have 30 features. So 30 right there and then it's doing uh, uh, multi-category encoding, and then it's doing normalization as part of uh, the routine. So it'd be interesting to test by not doing this min-max scalar and seeing if it's actually, if this normalization is enough, but I always do it outside of the model anyhow. Okay, then it got 512 dense layers with a ReLU activation, and then 32 dense with uh, ReLU activation, and finally one output, right, uh, right there. And uh, yeah, so this seems to be a good uh, good model right there. I mean, it says one output because this is a binary classification. So that one output is a probability between uh, between benign and malignant.
people often get confused about binary classification. I should have two outputs. Why do I have only one? Well, one is enough, right? If that output e, uh, has a value of 0 0.001, oh, it's benign. If the value has uh, is closer to one, it's malignant or the vice versa, depending on how we, yeah, malignant is one and benign is zero, okay? So you just need one output in case you wonder. Okay, so there you go. And now you can just dump that model into, you know, a H5 file or save it and then use it for classification in future. So I hope you found this to be useful. And in the next tutorial, let's uh, look at exactly the same, but for image classification example using CIFAR dataset. It doesn't matter. I can use my own custom datasets. I just want to show you the implementation, how simple it is. And I'm not even going to talk about all these other type of uh, stuff that it can actually do, text reg regressor, text classifier. In fact, Autokeras has excellent documentation, so I don't need to do much of anything. If you want me to cover something, let me know. Thank you very much for your attention. Please subscribe. Thanks.